Welcome to the computer graphics course. In this introductory video, we're going to look at different uses of computer graphics. The first use you probably are all familiar with is video games and entertainment. And we can really see how computer graphics has been developing if you look at uh, different games from different eras. So let's say the Deus Ex from the 2000s and Deus Ex Human Revolution from 2011. Uh, continuing it, Deus Ex Mankind Divided from 2016 and Cyberpunk 2077 from 2020. And we can really see how computer graphics, real-time computer graphics has been developing uh, in these uh, 20 or even 30 years. Another example we can talk about is different movies. Uh, so here's a TV show Babylon 5 from, do, uh, from 1993. And if we compare this to Foundation from 2023, almost like 30 years after, we can really see the difference. Another usage that you are also all familiar with is graphical user interfaces. So everything you see on your screen, uh, this word uh, you, graphical user interface or this kind of uh, graph-like tree-like structure or even these curves and histograms the, and buttons, these are all rendered to the screen. And computer graphics is what is rendering these to your screen and uh, allowing you to find the correct tools or visualize some kind of interesting, uh, uh, useful data. Another example is computer-aided design. So it's much cheaper to, let's say, design a car uh, or a house uh, first in the computer than uh, trying to build it uh, in, uh, in the real world. So you can uh, design all the different parts and see how they fit and how they work together uh, in, the, in a computer and design your car and design your house here. And when it's designed and it's ready, then you can go and, and build it in the real world. This is abbreviated as CAD, Computer Aided Design. Another one is data visualization. So we have all sorts of data. For example, here we can see these world ocean currents. Uh, but this data is uh, numerical, but uh, in order for humans to see it, well, we have to visualize it somehow. And this is again where computer graphics comes into play. So how do you take this numerical data and visualize it in a way that's uh, immersive and uh, easily readable for, for people? How do you color these? Or the, or the world's biggest airlines, so uh, what are the flight paths across different cities in the world? If you just look at this data in a big table with numbers, you wouldn't really be able to tell where are these uh, airlines going and where, where is the most traffic in the world. Another example is scientific simulation visualization. So this is a bit tricky, uh, but we can look at like a COVID uh, particle or this Parker solar probe. So this is like a spacecraft that flies to the sun and there really isn't like a cameraman <laughs> next to it filming it as it moves towards the sun. But we uh, humans do want to see, like, what does it look like to, to really understand uh, this, this spacecraft flying towards the sun and, and how, how the sun might look like and what, what is this uh, spacecraft, how does that look like? So this is a real thing uh, flying towards the sun, but, but we can visualize it with computer graphics and really convey the message and, and the meaning of, of what is happening to people. Uh, similarly with the COVID particle, so if uh, there was this COVID pandemic, everyone was talking about, okay, there is this virus, but not many people kn knew, like, what would a virus even look like? So scientists visualized uh, this, and, and this gave, like, an image to the, uh, to, the, to the virus. Another example is simulations. So this is an autonomous vehicle simulation from the Autonomous Driving Lab here in the Univers University of Tartu, here in Delta. So uh, simulations allow different situations to play out in a safe environment. So uh, the autonomous driving lab is uh, training different uh, uh, algorithms to uh, drive an autonomous car. And before they uh, like put these algorithms into the actual car and go out and drive the actual car, they uh, run these algorithms in this simulation to see what would the car do in different situations. So, for example, if a human would cross this uh, crosswalk there, would the car stop or not? Uh, and and uh, there are all sorts of different uh, simulations like that. Another, uh, perhaps similar example is simulators. So those also simulate some kind of a situation, but uh, in that case, uh, they are uh, meant for training people or giving people some sort of a realistic experience. 
So we can talk about flight simulators. So if uh, pilots are training to be pilots, then uh, they uh, go through um, sessions in simulators to really train. So what do all these buttons do if there's a situation there? How does it feel like uh, for, for them to be in this, uh, in this airplane without actually being in an airplane because they're still learning? Another interesting example is this uh, road planer simulator in, in the Estonian Road Museum. So there you can like uh, play with this simulator to see how this uh, this road planer that is like making roads planar so that they, they're not wobbly. Uh, uh, what sorts of uh, controls would a would a driver of such a vehicle have, and what what would they need to do to actually work that machine? Then of course art is one of the important use cases of computer graphics. So uh, you can write different uh, algorithms, for example, that would generate you different uh, these shapes, these like, kind of fractal shapes that go on uh, infinitely. But, but it's not just about math. It, uh, it's about using this math to make something uh, pretty and engaging uh, happen. Like how do you color these shapes and how do you mix them uh, together to create these stunning visuals? And there's all sorts of uh, things you can do here, like uh, different animations, uh, like logo animations, uh, different commercials, uh, or, or uh, kind of these uh, artsy uh, visuals, uh, and maybe even interactive uh, visuals. And you can see like these areas are overlapping, so we can talk about art, but we can also talk about like entertainment and, and the, our video games art, our movies art. And, uh, and, and this, is, uh, this is a bit similar to the first category. And if you like uh, click on these links here, we can see like there are, uh, for example, there are these game jams and uh, there is like an artsy visualization of, uh, of Ludum Dara 40's uh, schedule and this kind of a shape is uh, growing in the background. But how do computer graphics actually happen? So this is what this course is about. Uh, so in this course, you're gonna learn a lot about computer graphics and how to program a computer to, to draw these visuals. And uh, the first half of our course is going to follow the standard graphics pipeline. So some of you probably know that uh, your computers have a graphics card. So this is a dedicated piece of hardware that is responsible for uh, rendering things on your screen, putting images there, putting graphical user interfaces there, uh, drawing these pixels. So there are uh, specific steps that this graphics car, graphic card does uh, to render uh, different, uh, different visuals. And largely we'll be focusing on 3D graphics, but we'll also have some 2D things. To give a brief overview, so on the, we, can, we can section this into two sides. So we can section this into like a CPU side and a GPU side, and then the GPU outputs the, the image on your screen. So um, on the CPU side, uh, we want to, or the application needs to kind of define or construct some geometry, uh, define transformations, set material properties, all sorts of things. And we'll look into like how, how does that work uh, more specifically in the, in the materials. But the important thing to know here is that on the CPU side, we, we kind of construct a mathematical world of what needs to be rendered. And there are different libraries that help with this, and we'll look into three, these libraries in the practice sessions, uh, because like uh, some operations are commonplace, and uh, and implementing the same algorithms all over again uh, is tedious. So we can use different libraries that already implement uh, common uh, graphics algorithms, and then we have APIs. So maybe you've heard about like OpenGL, WebGL, Vulkan, or DirectX. So these are different APIs that allow the CPU to communicate with the GPU. So those APIs allow uh, this geometry that you, this world you built up on the CPU side to be sent to the GPU for rendering. And uh, in the first half of this course, we'll look through uh, these steps, basically follows uh, this, uh, this pipeline. Uh, we'll learn about vertex shaders, fragment shaders, uh, calling and clipping, rasterization, visible distance blending, and, and what do these things even mean? So keep this image in mind uh, throughout the rest of the course. So from this video, you should now understand different areas that use computer graphics. So video games, digital entertainment, user interfaces, CAD, 
data visualization, scientific simulation visualization, simulator, uh, simulations, simulators, art, and you can even uh, keep going here. And uh, the standard graphics pipeline. So there are specific steps that the GPU does with the data that you send it through APIs.